All right, let's show you an example of a full entire strength circuit able to do with a torn, about two and a half weeks out from a torn distal bicep tendon. Complete rupture, complete separation and rupture, but I'm trying to work through it in the next two weeks to not need surgery. I don't really need surgery. I'm probably not gonna have surgery. I'm gonna show you how it's possible to already work through this with only two weeks after it happens. So we're starting a single arm chest press on the strong side. I already could light dumbbells if I wanted to do chest press on the, on the injured side, but I'm still gonna give it another week and a half, two weeks before I actually put weight on it, use weight. So today I'm using just bands because I already have the range of motion and I could already push with the triceps, shoulders, forearms. There's enough strength on the other side to help it. But I'm gonna let it finish its healing. It's already past the pain and the initial trauma stage, but I'm gonna let it melt in and mold in like freaking Wolverine for another week and a half or two weeks. So instead I'm doing bands over here. And this is the first, first or second day of actually adding back in full range of motion bands. I was doing some warm up rotator cuff stuff for the bands and that was it. So for the two weeks, for the first two weeks, didn't miss a single day. Every day it was just single arm on the other arm. And this arm, I would just stretch the shoulder and do range of motion stuff for the shoulder so the shoulder didn't stiffen up because the arm really wasn't able to move too much when this was all inflamed in here. Since it's a lot of upper body and just to one side, just adding in 15 jacks in between, just keep the heart rate up, but give the arms, especially the left arm, which is doing all the work, a little extra break. So we're gonna do this and then go right to pull, bend to a row. So we're going push, pull, and lower. In between the two push and pulls of the two upper body, we're doing just a light body weight cardio set. So now we're going to the pull, bend to a row. This arm could work totally full. The core is still working, legs are still working. This is why I'm choosing not to go surgery where I could still, don't have to miss anything. But you can see this arm can do whatever it needs to. It can move around. I can still pull a gun out. I can still tie my shoes. So it's fully functional as an arm. There's just no bicep attacks at the bottom, which I'm gonna work around because the test that the surgeon did showed that the shoulder muscle, the tricep muscle and the forearm muscle that I have worked, helped it, no problem. So I really didn't need to have surgery if I don't want to, so it's totally my choice. So for this one, just going with a row, slow and squeeze, focusing on lat. Not extending it too much, because this is still not fully healed in here. So I'm not letting it stretch me out totally, but still getting a range of motion, still working my grip, still working my forms, constantly in my head, squeezing in my lat. So I'm keeping it alive. If you choose to get surgery, you're in a cast for a couple weeks, then after maybe six weeks, maybe you're moving it like this, maybe doing a five pound dumbbell and you're out of the game, you can't shoot, can't do any, any other crap you wanna be doing. So the first lower set is a squat, holding a dumbbell, just so this arm doesn't wear out too much. So I'm holding it up here in my chest and this arm is just gonna get a little extra support. And my squat, my torso is still totally straight, so I'm not leaning to one side. And I don't want the left arm wearing out, having to do everything, so this one is just bracing it so the left arm's not doing all the work. So even though my arms look a little uneven, if you look at my torso, my hips, my legs, everything is straight, everything is squared off for the squat set. Because I don't want to be leaning to one side and doing every set where I'm leaning and it's tilting me to the side. I want to stay straight and square. And this arm's still getting just a little work supporting it there. We're going back to a push, another push, going just overhead shoulder press. So this is one I'm going extra light on because I don't need to start straining, over using, over straining the shoulder in the uninjured arm. So just keeping the shoulders alive in this, one. especially I already did chest press and tons of work on this single arm. So it's just a light, slow, tight, controlled shoulder press. On this side, I don't want to do an overhead shoulder press. So instead I'm going to do a single arm reverse fly. So I'm still getting some shoulder movement. It's more of the rear delt, upper back, but it's working the shoulder. I'm still working my grip. It's having to at least hold isometric here in the bicep and in the joint to hold it. Not doing a ton of them, just doing like eight of these. There's the first push and I got to do a jack in between to give those arms a little break before the next pull, which is going to be bicep curl on the strong side and a single arm, straight arm, lat pullover on the injured side. 
This is just to give this arm a couple seconds of a break because it's working non-stop the left side. And to keep the heart rate up, keep the blood flowing. So I'm not moving too slow, keeping the energy levels up. I can bounce like this all day. And the funny thing is I feel this bicep in there loose, jiggling around. That's right, it's gonna mold and form into the bone. So we're going single arm, bicep curl. Same thing as the shoulder. I'll get reps in on this. I'll get squeezed. Bicep curls are not that important. So I'm not gonna go super crazy on it and end up overloading this bicep and screwing up this bicep. It's just work keeping it alive without overdoing it. So this arm can catch up a little bit. And then this arm is able to balance things out, even things out. So I'll be back to doing pull-ups, rope climbs, monkey bars, another couple weeks. Rather than if, if you get surgery, in order to do that stuff, it's gonna be minimum, minimum. Three months if you're Superman, probably five, six months to do rope climb and stuff like that after a surgery. So instead of bicep curl on this side, I'm just doing a straight arm pullover. I'm working my core, my legs are stabilizing me in the lat, my forearm, a little bit of tricep and squeeze at the bottom. We're not really having to do any bending or flexion in the bicep. Still not ready to do any tension like that with it, especially until it finishes molding and scarring up in here a little bit, building up some scar tissue, which it already started doing. Again, I'm only gonna do like six or eight of these, don't need a ton, just keep that arm alive. And the last one is lower body. Same thing as the squat. I don't want this arm overloading, so I'm gonna hold it sideways like this. 80% of the holding is gonna be on the left arm, but then the bad arm is just gonna support it. So it's keeping me straight and square, getting a deadlift. So the right arm is working a little bit, stabilizing, so it's not dead. And it's also making the left arm not have to do 100% of the work for every single set. Taking some tension off of the left arm so they don't end up wearing and overusing the left arm. So six straight sets, push, pull, lower. A cardio set in between the two upper body sets. Band set on the injured side. Also, because the most common thing that happens is someone injures one side, they end up overdoing the other side. And while this one starts getting better, they end up injuring and screwing up the other side. That's what we're looking to avoid here. This is exactly how you can keep it going and not make any excuses. This is literally two and a half weeks from ripping it off the bone, like rip and pop and snap, from doing some crazy plyometric rope climbs. Still haven't missed a day. This is exactly how you can get it done, even without surgery. No excuses.